we finally see Joy Boy in the full full silhouette we finally see joy boy in full silhouette but in all seriousness getting to see joy boy in the full even by way of just the silhouette that is still very exciting and raises so many points for discussion and raises so many questions so from the silhouette it appears that he's wearing a coat or a cape and what is most likely almost most definitely that iconic straw hat and as such mr joy boy here is very much much giving off the vibe of early Shanks at the beginning of the series, Luffy at Wano with his cape, or even Roger and his first meeting with Rayleigh, which really just establishes that parallel between Joy Boy and that line of Joy Boy-esque characters that we've had in much more recent history. And I guess none of this is all that surprising really. I mean, did any of us really question whether Joy Boy would own his own straw hat at this point? But still, it's very cool to see this all visually confirmed. Maybe what is surprising, however, is Joy Boy's size. Because he doesn't seem that big, but this may be because of scaling inconsistencies. Now, we're looking at Joy Boy's size in comparison to Emmett here. And Emmett himself has been drawn very inconsistently throughout the Egghead Island arc. And scaling in general isn't what I would call one of the great accuracies in One Piece. So look, it's hard to say, but looking at these panels, it seems like Joy Boy just isn't that big. Or it's very fair to say that he's at least not giant sized. And if he's not that big, this may mean that he's actually just a regular human and not a giant. Potentially not even a buccaneer. Potentially not even any other race. Because he does look quite very ordinary, very human. Although I have seen comments about his twig legs, as well as his almost strangely disproportionately thin arm, suggesting that he might have wooden leg or wooden leg and maybe a mechanic arm. Now, I personally just interpreted it as, again, just size proportions in one piece. And also, it's the perspective or the angle at which he's been drawn. Plus, this panel might even get touched up and redrawn for that final formal volume release. But I guess you can never really rule things out. But if we do suppose that Joy Boy really is a human, then this, of course, leads to the question, what's with that giant straw hat at Marajoie? Perhaps we could just assume that Joy Boy using the Nika powers stretched himself and also stretched his straw hat to giant size so that the straw hat would fit him even if he expanded to that size and the world government has since then been storing it in a freezer in a cool room to keep it at that size potentially because if joy boy used his nika powers on it then maybe they could run experiments on the straw hat try find out more about the nika properties about the nika devil fruit or seeing as we now know that you can and store Haki into objects. Maybe that straw hat at Marajoie also contains Haki. And if the world government knows of this fact, that's what they've been experimenting on. And I guess with that mention of Haki, the most intriguing part of chapter 1122, Joy Boy is a master S++++ tier Haki user. Quite possibly. I'm actually gonna say most likely, most almost definitely the strongest Haki user in the series to date. Maybe all time. Although I was discussing this with a friend of mine who pointed out that in Film Red we saw Vice Admiral Momonga go down, have to kneel because of Shanks' use of Conqueror's Haki. And here in chapter 1122, it does seem like all the Vice Admirals have been able to withstand Joy Boy's Haki. But, you know, is Film Red really canon? Or is that part supposed to be canon? And also, who cares? I'ma just say it. Joy Boy is the master top tier here top one strongest Conqueror's Haki user. Look at that Wi-Fi spamming Haki. Haki that has been stored for generations, for centuries. Stored into an object, transferred to another person, and contained for almost a millennia. That is some crazy freaking power. Although this was some insane use of Haki, insanely impressive use of Haki, I do have to say I find it hard to believe that this is going to be the resolution of the Egghead Island incident that's going to shock the entire world, which would then suggest that we're not quite done with the Egghead Island arc yet, especially seeing that Saturn is also still present on the island. So I really do wonder what's left, what's going to be that final 
big resolution that's going to shock the world and make the headlines. But before we go any further, I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to ask you all to please subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe and help me unleash my crazy, insane advanced conquerors haki by getting me to 100k subscribers. Was that a smooth enough transition? Oh well. So, Joy Boy's haki was strong enough to break whatever power that Saturn was using, whatever ability that Saturn or the Goros they were using to be present at Egghead. And I have to say, the Elbafian giants put it best when they asked, how did this haki make the Gorosei disappear? That is the question. What is the link between the haki and the summoning portal ability? Not to mention, of course, that Imu was also affected by the haki. So if we put all of this together, I'm gonna have to say this seems to bear more support, bear more weight to the theory that the Gorosei are all connected to Imu, similar to the Vegapunk, Stellar, and Satellite situation. Almost as if the Gorosei are some sort of extensions of Imu. And then that could then explain the summoning power and how they were all forced back into Marijoie if Saturn's ability to summon the rest of the Gorosei to Egghead Island was on some sort of reliance on Imu's abilities and Imu's power and the fact that they're all connected. This could then mean that Imu was feeling everything that was going on at Egghead once Imu was overwhelmed by that Haki. That summoning chain, that summoning link broke because Imu was overpowered. We're seeing as we haven't seen Imu having any part in this whole summoning ability themselves, it seems like the force of Joy Boy's insane Haki reversed whatever spell that Saturn was using, forcing them all to go back to Marijoie. But I have to question why Saturn wasn't himself blasted back onto the ship, because technically speaking, Saturn also summoned himself onto Egghead Island. He was there on the ship and then he teleported using his own summoning abilities. So I feel like according to what happened to the rest of the Gorosei, when Joy Boy's Haki was unleashed, I feel like he should have also been transported back to the ship. And there is also the question mark surrounding Mars as well, because Mars looks like he's been back at Marajoie for quite some time now, unrelated to Joy Boy's Haki. Which would then suggest for, as far as we know, he got summoned back after that combined attack from chapter 1119 from the Straw Hat crew and Bonnie, or Sanji and Frankie from the Straw Hat crew and Bonnie and Luffy. And that combo attack is what forced him back to Marajoie, which I have to say also seems a little hard to believe. I mean, sure, it was a combined attack, but we just saw from chapter 1121 that the combined attack used there by Luffy and Bonnie, both of them in Nika forms, both of them using really strong attacks, that still wasn't really enough to damage or stop Saturn in any meaningful way. We see Saturn back in chapter 1122. So was that combo attack from 1119 really enough to force Force Mars back to Marajoie. I guess Bonnie was also in her Nika form in chapter 1119. And yeah, I suppose that attack had the combined strength of Sanji and Frankie as well as Luffy and Bonnie. But I don't know, it's just that compared to Joy Boy's insane Haki, it just doesn't seem comparable. So maybe the idea is just that if you get blasted far away enough, is the link that is holding you to your summon spot broken? Is that summoning chain that summoning link broken when you when you're too far away from the location that you got summoned to does that chain break and so you just have to return to your original spot maybe that's what happens and is that why Mars returned to Marajoie because he just got blasted too far away anyways apart from the mystery surrounding the summoning powers I think this reveal of Joy Boy's Haki is also very important because it opens up avenues for future fights we didn't previously know that storing Haki was something that you you could do. I mean, we did know that you could imbue Haki into objects like swords, into weapons, for example, but that's not quite the same as storing a massive force of Haki into an object and containing it over a prolonged period of time so that when it's unleashed, it can set off a Haki explosion. And now that we know this is an ability, this is a power that exists, this means that theoretically, Luffy can also now store and transfer his Haki. He can use this attack or he can help his friends use this attack in future fights. Imagine Usopp being able to unleash Luffy's Haki. I guess sort of like using Impact Dial. Also, now that we know that Joy Boy's Haki was strong enough to 
stop the Gorosei from being able to use their creature forms, then this gives us a pretty good indication of what has to be Luffy's next power-up. He needs to be strong enough, and his use of his Conqueror's Haki needs to get strong enough so that he can prevent the Gorosei from using their creature forms, or transforming into their creature forms. Which then also goes back to what Kaido said near the end of Wano, that power and strength in this world ultimately comes down to Haki. I guess some other important things that we need to mention is that this ability to store Haki and specifically to be able to store it in a knot, that seems to be very much a callback to the wind knots that we were introduced to in Weatheria. And I suppose it's not too surprising that the science that exists in the current day, the current history of One Piece, are all tied back to the science that existed in the Ancient Kingdom. But exactly how Joy Boy or the Ancient Kingdom have achieved this feat of storing Conqueror's Haki into knots, that's something I am eagerly waiting to find out. Now aside from Haki powers, there are also other mysteries surrounding Joy Boy. The one that probably intrigues me the most is Joy Boy's comment or Emmett's comment about Joy Boy wanting to become the king. You know, Emmett apologizes to Joy Boy for not being able to make him king. And the natural, the big question for us is king of what? King of the pirates? King of the ancient kingdom? King of the world? Because Roger was the pirate king, the first pirate king to the best of our knowledge. But that term, pirate king, was not a term that Roger came up for himself. It wasn't a title that he gave to himself, but it was bestowed onto him by the world, or by Morgans in fact. So even if we were to suppose that Morgan came up with this title because he was inspired by another long lost legend who also held this name some 900 years ago, we also know that Joy Boy was the first pirate. So this idea of a pirate king isn't really something that should have existed back then. So then does this mean that Joy Boy wanted to become the king of the world? The king of the world in a similar way that Rox wanted to become king of the world? King of the world in a very similar vein to how Imu is currently the secret king of the world. You know, perhaps that's why the 20 kingdoms came up with that ethos that no one man should rule on top of the entire world in the first place. If the fight against the ancient kingdom and against Joy Boy specifically in the Void Century was to stop Joy Boy from becoming the king of the world, and we do know from the flashback during Vegapunk's message that the 20 kingdoms did oppose Joy Boy specifically, then it makes sense that they would adopt this ideology or justification that no one man should become the king of the world because that's how they would justify their fight against Joy Boy. Or I guess you could also wonder whether Joy Boy wanted to become king of the ancient kingdom because I have made some other videos about this topic and I would very much encourage you all to go watch it if you haven't already. But if we take the idea that the ancient kingdom is a lot more nuanced than being simply good and the 20 kingdoms as being simply bad. And if we think that the ancient kingdom had some good, had some bad citizens, and there was potential for the ancient kingdom to use their technological advancements for good or for bad, then you could also think that Joy Boy wanted to become the king of the ancient kingdom so that he could use the powers of the ancient kingdom for good. You know, maybe for some political, diplomatic reasons so that he could improve the relationship between the ancient kingdom and the other kingdoms. Potentially, he could have wanted to become king so that he could prevent the war that happened. And now that I think about it, the fact that Emmett apologizes to Joy Boy for failing to make Joy Boy king, this reminds me of Joy Boy's apology to the fishman. You know, what if this is also Joy Boy's apology? Sorry that I wasn't able to become king. And this goes back to Luffy's ideology or Luffy's definition of what being king means, or at least what being pirate king means. According to Luffy, being pirate king means being the most freest man in the world, being the freest person, basically getting to do whatever he wants. And if we apply this same definition, if Joy Boy had a very similar idea, a very similar inkling of what being king meant, the way that Joy Boy could have seen it was that if he became king, he could do whatever he wanted. If he became king, he could unite all races. He could elevate the status of disenfranchised races because he could decree it so. He could decree that the fishmen could live on the surface alongside the rest of the world. For Joy Boy, being king means he had the power and authority to make these sort of changes. And so, because he failed to become king, he failed his friends, hence a very similar apology to the one that Emmett is making now. Sorry that I failed to become 
become king and sorry that I broke the promise of bringing you all to the surface. And that seems to fit the story and what we know of Joy Boy's character more. A lot more than simply Joy Boy being a man who was also greedy for power and coveted authority for the sake of ruling the world. Another interesting comment within this flashback is that Joy Boy has come to Emmett's rescue in the past. Which is a testament to just how strong Joy Boy is. Because Joy Boy, as we've hypothesized, is just a regular human, is able to save an iron giant. But also, this promises us flashbacks to previous moments when Joy Boy has saved Emmett's in the past, and I can't wait to witness that. I also think that when this flashback that we're witnessing now, when this one is fleshed out more, we'll actually get to see where this flashback is taking place, and more specifically, or most importantly, what Joy Boy is sitting on, because here it seems like Joy Boy may be sitting on a poneglyph, but I think it could also be one of the watchtowers at Zo that surround its perimeter. Whereas if we focus on Emmett in chapter 1122, Emmett is wearing clothes, and not just any old clothes, clothes that are very reminiscent of the attire that giants wear, which is a very curious detail, and it raises questions like, were Iron Giants man-made creations to emulate giants? Or are Iron Giants a type of giants themselves? Because it was brought to my attention during my reaction during my live stream that Dorian Broggy exclaimed that Emmett is an Iron Giant. They don't call him a robot like Luffy or the rest of the Straw Hats did. They exclaim that he's an Iron Giant as if the Iron Giant is almost another species. Or they at least know of Iron Giants as distinct beings they knew of the existence of Iron Giants already. Which on one hand, I guess does make sense given the age of the Abelfian Giants. I'm sure they know a lot more about the role of Iron Giants throughout history, whether that be in the Void Century or even 200 years ago with Emmett's attack on Marijuana. But especially after Vegapunk's comments in chapter 1121 about how all the races, all the peculiar races being somehow linked to what happened in the Void Century, I just can't help but want wonder more about why Emmett is dressed in giant clothes. But if we delve further into what Emmett is wearing, the X on his arms. Now it's difficult to say whether the X's on his arms mean anything specifically or significant because it's not exactly like the X that was on the Straw Hat's arms at Arabasta because it's on both of Emmett's arms. But of course, as One Piece fans, it would be remiss of us not to mention that Emmett does have X's on his arms which does feel very much like a callback to Arabasta. And it's very fitting now, now that we know that Emmett was one of Joy Boy's Nakama. And on that note about their friendship, this flashback, the friendship between Joy Boy and Emmett was so super sweet to witness. Emmett is so cute, which is not what I expected from this big chunk of metal. But it's very much like how Alphonse Elric in Full Metal Alchemist, how he was the cuter and sweeter brother. And that really made me smile in this chapter and the smile on Emmett's face as well that really made me light up and so it's a very bittersweet ending that we get to Emmett here in chapter 1122 heartwarming and heartbreaking to see that his last thoughts his dying thoughts are of his friend on that note as Emmett dies so did the transponder snail and what the hey Vegapunk still had more to say I don't know I can't believe that and there is actually so much more that I would like to say about chapter 1122 but I'm looking at the time now so we are gonna cut our discussion here but seeing as it is a break week tune in subscribe turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on my video discussing some of the other very important things some of the very important discussions coming out of this chapter like what is Blackbeard's next move what does Kobe mean what will be the resolution of the Egghead Island incident all of this and more Make sure to subscribe, watch my next videos. Thank you for sticking with me this far. Thank you to all of our channel and Patreon members for your continued support. And if you would like to also be one of our channel and Patreon members, then please do join. But of course, as always, you continuing to watch my videos is more than enough. So on that note, I'll see you in the next video. This is Joy Girl. I'll see you again soon.